Well, last week we started a new series titled, We Know. Uh, we're in an uncertain time in the uh, country. Uh, it's a time that in my lifetime, I've never seen anything like this where we've gone through a quarantine. And so there's a lot of uncertainty about the virus. There's uncertainty about the economy. There's uncertainty about how long are we gonna be sheltering in place? What's that gonna look like? I think there's a lot of uncertainty about the recovery itself and how long is it gonna take for the economy to recover? All kinds of questions. But in the midst of all of this, we can know this. In the midst of questions, in the midst of uncertainty, we have a God who is unchanging. And one of the things he does is he deals in the certain. The Bible is full of absolutes. It's full of truths that we can know. And so we're doing a series called We Know. Now, last week, we saw that we know God answers prayer. We know He answers prayer because we have a relationship with Him. We have eternal life. And because of that, we know that He hears us. And if He hears us, we have the things we have asked for from Him. We know God answers prayer. And tonight, I want to talk to you about we know God is working for our good. And it's a familiar verse, you know, Romans 8, 28. If you've been a Christian very long, you've heard this verse. Maybe it's one of the verses that you know from memory uh, because it just is so encouraging. This is what Romans 8, 28 says. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. That's one of the great promises in all of God's Word. And when we think on God's promises, what it does, it warms our heart to His presence. The more I think about the Word of God, the more I sense the presence of God. The more I think about the Word of God, the more faith rises in my heart, the more I believe God, because the more real His Word is to me. The more I think about God's Word, the more His peace covers my mind. You know, I can't worry about things if I'm thinking or meditating on the Word of God. And when I'm thinking about the Word of God, what it does, it brings joy to my countenance right away. It brings a smile to your face because you're, you're thinking, look what God is doing. He is working in all things. That just makes you happy to realize He's doing that. So uh, let me give you some things to think about from Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. We know in all things God works. Romans 8, 28. In all things God works. God is at work. He's up to something. He's working. He hasn't taken a vacation. He hasn't created the world, spun it into existence, and walked away. God is working. You know what that means? God is working in our homes. God is working in our finances. God is working in our health. God is working in our world. God is working in the governments of this world. He's working in our national government, in our local government. He's at work. He's working in our hospitals. God is working in all the things you and I are concerned about. And get this, He's working in a thousand other places that we haven't even thought about, that we're not even concerned about. I don't know about you, but as I think of that, I am so thankful that God is working in a host of things I haven't even thought about because I need His help. And God is working in all things. And there's no limiter to this. All things, the good things, the disappointing things, the frustrating things, the tragic things, the difficult things, the stressful things, the happy things, all things. God is working. He's working in all things. It's interesting that word for works, and we know in all things God works. That word in the Greek is sooner erge. It, it is the word we get our word synergy from. As a Christian, as, as a follower of Christ, I want you to think about this. There's a divine synergy that is at work. God is taking all of the things in our life, every single aspect, the positive and the negative, the joyful and the sorrowful, and He's working synergistically in all of it. 
There isn't one thing you and I could name where God is not at work. Now, you know, you might say, well, John, I just, I've been praying and I don't see him working. Let me encourage you. His working is not determined by our seeing. We're not going to see most of what God does. He's working behind the scenes. When you and I pray, he's working. Maybe you've been stepping out in your faith and you're giving and, and you're saying, you know, I just don't see him working yet. Do you realize that in your giving, your giving is not only going to result in blessing in the short term, but in the long term? That God is working, that our faithfulness in giving, he honors not only next month, not only next year, but as we build up that pattern of faithfulness, we're sowing seed that reaps a harvest many times years later. He is at work and, and God is working to build our faith. So as we, as we think about him working, we begin to trust him more and uh, he is working. Here's the second thing I, n- I noticed when I read Romans 8, 28. We know God is working for the good of those who love him. The Bible says God is good and he does good. He is synergistically working all things together for the good. Now, let me just say this. That doesn't mean all the things that happen to you are good. Nor does it mean that God thinks the evil things that happen to you are good. It means God is taking everything and bringing good out of it, working something beneficial from it. He's taking that struggle, he's taking that suffering, and he's providentially at work, weaving together his plan, working by his power in your life and my life to bring about good. It's very similar to what we see in in the book of Genesis, the story of Joseph, where Joseph says, you intended it for evil, but God intended it for good. So Joseph's brothers intended to harm him, but God was using it to work out his plan in Joseph's life. If you're not familiar with that story, check it out. It's in Genesis chapter, it starts in Genesis chapter 37 on through the end of the book of Genesis. It's such a powerful example of how God works. God is working all things for good. Now listen to this, to those who love him. It would be a mistake to read Romans 8, 28 and somehow think, well, you know, God takes and just works everything out. That's just what he does. That's not what it's saying. What it's saying is he does that for people who know him. He does that for people who love him. He does that for people who are walking with him. God works to bring good into the lives of his children. But if you don't know the Lord, if you're not walking with the Lord, then you don't have that promise. You can have that promise if you give your heart to Jesus, rededicate your life to him. That's the value of knowing Jesus, of walking with him is, you know he's going to work things out for the good. So many people miss out on the good that God would want to do for them, but it can be theirs if they'll just surrender their life to him. God works everything out for the good. You know, it reminds me of James chapter one, where it says he is the generous gift giving God, that God loves to do good things for us. And when you're following Jesus, you can be sure of this. He's working all things together for the good, for those who love him. And now there's another aspect to that verse. God is working for the good of those who are called and living out his purpose in their lives. Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. God is working all things for good for those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. That's his promise. Life's not a random mess or even a mystery, although it could appear that way to us. God has a purpose. Our life has divine purpose. He has a purpose for each one of us in this life and a purpose for each one of us in the next life. Your life's not an accident. God is at work. I love Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. For we are God's workmanship 
You know, God created you and he created you with a purpose in mind. He created you to do good things, Ephesians chapter 2 says, to do good works, which he prepared in advance for us to do. God has a purpose for you today. He has a purpose for you tomorrow. And he has a purpose for all of us every single day in the future. Now I want to ask you this question. Do you know what your purpose is? Do you know why you were created? Do you know what your gifts are that he's given you? We talk a lot about grow track. In fact, we're looking at making grow track something that people can at least do the first couple of weeks online. And so you'll be hearing more about that. It's one of the things we're working about. But grow track, we're doing that because we want people to understand everybody's created on purpose with a purpose. And until we understand the purpose for which we were created, it will be impossible for us to live out the will of God for our life as he desires. God has a purpose for you. He has a purpose for me. He's created you with gifts. And here's something interesting. You know, I think a lot of people don't know the gifts God's put into them. A lot of people don't think they're especially gifted. And I think there are sometimes believers who really love the Lord aren't walking in the gifts that he's given them because they don't understand the purpose he has for them. But when you start walking in his purpose, you're gonna find that God starts revealing gifts you didn't even know you had to you. I think of Debbie. You know, Debbie is, is you know, just a delightful person. She. Uh, you know, has such a joy about her life. And I know the first several years of our marriage, um, tremendous wife and mother and a, a great pastor's wife. But when she began to understand that a part of his purpose for her was to step into something that initially she would have said she didn't really want to do, and that was leading women. When Debbie said, yes to the Lord, I'll do what you're asking me to do and accept that as your purpose for my life. All of a sudden, God began to breathe on her and release within her gifts. I don't think, well, I know she and I did not realize she had. And it's been such a joy to watch that. And it's blessed not only the uh, women's ministry at James River and the sisterhood, but it has blessed the church. And I would say, bless the world. She stepped into the purpose God had for her and discovered gifts she never knew she had. Listen, God has a purpose for you. God is working. So let's tie this together. We're going through a difficult time in our country. And I know for, for many of you, there's this uncertainty economically and you're thinking, what is God doing? What's he doing with my business? You know, how are we going to make it? Uh, what's going to happen? What, what's life going to be like uh, six months from now, a year from now? You know, none of us know the answer to those questions. There might be people who think they know. None of us know the answer to those questions. Here's what we do know, that God's at work that God's working in all things. He's working in the middle of this pandemic. He's working in the middle of this downturn. He's working on a macro scale. He's working on a micro scale. So he's working in the big picture and in the little picture. He's working in the country. He's working in the county. He's working in your neighborhood. And he's working in your life. He's working in your company. I'm just simply saying, Rest in the fact God is at work, and he's a God who's a good God. He's a God who does good things. He's a God who loves to show his divine supernatural power in the lives of his people. He delights to do that, and he's going to do that in your situation. He is going to take what Satan and sin intended for harm and evil, and he's going to work it for good. I can't wait to see what he's going to do. I know this. He's working in my life. I know that he's working in Debbie in my marriage through all of this. I know that he's working in the church 
through all of this. I don't know what the church is gonna be like in the next year, the next 10 years, but I know this, it's gonna be good because he's a God who does good. And I know he's working in the, in the area and in the country. There's a lot of people gonna come to Christ because of this crisis. God is at work. Be encouraged, he's at work. When you can't see him working, when you don't understand what's happening or not happening, God is at work. And when you believe that and you rest in that, we can know that and we know that in all these things, God's at work. It gives us faith and confidence, encouragement and hope, which makes a massive difference in our lives. Let's pray.